Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Diary of a Linux Mint Noob. Um, I thought we'd get back on track this episode. Uh, as episode 2, I kind of delved in a bit deeper uh, with trying to get OpenShot working and learning a little bit about Codex, which I didn't know a lot about, but we got there in the end and uh, got the video edited and uh, uh, and up to uh, to YouTube. In fact, um, it seemed a better quality video perhaps than the first one, and perhaps that's my understanding of the software is getting a bit better. So yeah, this episode, um, I think we're going to uh, visit um, what I mentioned before in episode one, uh, that we just see if we can connect to the Vortex box, which I have on my home network. Uh, we'll see if we can view the files on there and uh, see if we can rename them um, and, and preview them uh, and, and put them in uh, order. So the, uh, the XBMC installation I've got on the little Raspberry Pi elsewhere on my network uh, can use them. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see. Oh, and just one last thing. Um, I have actually changed hardware. Uh, I was using my old Works laptop. I'm now using my uh, Alienware uh, M11X um, for this video uh, because uh, I think either the end of this video or perhaps episode four, I'm going to look at trying to install some computer games through Steam, and I wanted to use the um, the more modern hardware of um, my Alienware laptop. So if uh, we want to have a quick look in uh, system monitor again and you can see that I've now got a, a four core uh, uh, CPU uh, still got four gig of RAM and if we pop across to system we can see that it's a, an i5 uh, mobile uh, chipset running at 1.6 gig so um, yeah we'll see how that uh, how that fares uh, perhaps at the end of this episode or perhaps next episode we'll, we'll see how this one goes so first off, let's see if we can connect to the uh, the Vortex box. Now I do remember uh, opening up the uh, the home folder. On the bar here, there was a network uh, tab. So if we go into network, yep, we can see the Vortex box on the network. And uh, in we go. Now I believe that the Vortex box presents its uh, shared folders through uh, the Windows uh, SMB sharing protocol. And um, I think that Linux uses uh, Samba, I, I believe either Linux or Ubuntu that, that Mint's based on, which means it, it can natively see these these shares, which is great for me being a noob, so I can just go and have a look at this. I know that Linux does use its own, or it can use its own file sharing um, system, which I don't know about yet, but um, anyway, let's, let's go and investigate these. I know that the files is the read-write access to the Vortex box, because I've done this work before from a, a Windows machine. And the movies, music, and pictures. Uh, these folders are just read-only, uh, so you tend to connect your um, your media devices to these, so they don't uh, tend to write over any of the information by mistake. So, into files we go. Okay, and I've just seen that that um, on the desktop we've uh, we've got this files on Vortex box. Uh, I don't know whether that's permanent, whether that'll disappear after a reboot or log off and log on. But I can see here it's also mounted down here. We've got a little eject icon as well. Oh, there we go, SMB, so it knows it's a, a, a um, an SMB share or Sander share, one, one or the other. Um, so right, let's go into movies, and um, we can see all the folders uh, from all the DVDs I've been, been busily uh, ripping uh, with my Vortex box. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, um, I, I'm, I'm going to have a look at, um, at the, some of the DVDs that, we've, that I've ripped. Uh, look at renaming them and move them over into the, this Doctor Who folder down here. And uh, yes, I am conformed to stereotype. I'm I'm a sci-fi fan and I'm using a PC and I'm learning Linux. So yes, yeah, good 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 stereotype there. But anyway, let's go in and have a look at one of these folders. So um, two four four one. Let's go and have a, a look in here. Okay, so I can see all the MKV files that have been ripped. Now normally. Uh, when I connect to this via Windows Share, I've got uh, uh, the details view as my uh, my default, where I can see uh, things like the file name. Uh, obviously, you can see the file name there, uh, date modified, and more importantly, the size. Um, so let's see if we can change that. Um, brought up to here, just on instinct, because this is kind of what we I'm used to in, in Windows in the Explorer uh, bar. So let's have a look at the list view. Okay, so yeah, there's list view and. Uh, 
I can tell pretty much straight away which of the episodes. I know that each 25 minute episode is roughly about a gig. So I can see that we've got one, two, three and four here. The rest of them probably being uh, special features. And, and this one I believe is, is all four of the episodes um, stitched together. Okay, so uh, that's, um, that's good, I can see those. I imagine though, probably if we go back out, and so let's go into 2332. Two. Yeah, it changed. It's not, not kept it as default, has it? So um, I wonder if we can. I ch changed it for that one. It's kept it for that one, but not for the others. Um, is it in view? I wonder if we can change this to make it um, reset view to default. Well, no, because I haven't set a default yet. Uh, edit. Okay, we've got preferences down at the bottom. Let's open up that and uh, default view. D yeah, default view. View new folders using icon view. No, I'd like to use the list view. Let's close that and we'll go out and then into. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yeah, changed already. Yeah, I could see that when I went up. So that is great. That's more like it. That's that's what I'd like to see. Okay, so I'm going to open up one of these these files and um, and then identify it. And then I've got to rename it. I'll, uh, I'll look online to do that. Um, and then see if we can get it uh, moved around, see how easy that is. So uh, let's, uh, let's just double click and, and see what happens. Okay, it's open it up in the uh, on player. I'll uh, just. You know, I can't ah. hear that music without. Oh, there we go. We've even got uh, commentary and, um, and subtitles on. So uh, I'm, I don't know what um, Google's copyright is um, regarding me showing this so I might have to blur uh, this out this looks like the war machines episode 2 and luckily it's called 2 but what I'll do is I'll uh, I was just going to press F2 to rename it um, which is what I do in Windows to rename files let's press F2 on that you're brilliant okay so exactly the same thing I'll just call that 2 so I know that's episode 2 and uh, I'm just going to go online okay I've just looked up on the tvdb.com uh, for episode two of the War Machines, and I can see here that it's uh, in in season three of uh, Doctor Who, and it's episode forty three. So I'm going to go back to my file here, and I'm going to F two to rename it um, using the uh, the naming convention that uh, the scraper in uh, XPMC likes. Uh, rename this uh, 1963 series. Uh, it's episode 42 and I'm just going to put on the end the War Machines episode 2 that's it ok so there we go we've got that renamed now what I'd normally do now is uh, I go in and oh that's nice that's uh, like Windows 7 it drops the, uh, the file extension off the end there I'll copy that onto the clipboard and I'll go and find the next file and uh, we'll see what this one is. Okay, I found out that this is uh, this is episode four, so uh, we're going to rename this this file. We'll put four on the end, and we'll change that to forty-four. Okay, uh, I'm going to find out the rest of the uh, the episode. Um, numbers and uh, we shall resume the video. Okay, I've uh, found the episode titles out and they've uh, they've been renamed. Uh, one thing I did like what, um, was as soon as I renamed them, um, it automatically readjusted um, their position in the the naming order. I noticed that one thing in uh, Windows, you usually have to go out of the uh, the folder you're in and back in for it to readjust or press F5 to to refresh the view, but this did it automatically. So. Uh, that's great. Okay, so we're going to um, move these into the uh, the folder for um, for XBMC to use. Right. One thing I've noticed, um, I'm trying to uh, drag a window, a selection box, as I would do in Windows, across these four files uh, by holding down the left hand mouse button and dragging the mouse cursor, and you can see nothing is happening. I don't know if it's a right click. No, that just brings up that menu. Uh, okay, so let's see if we can um, see if we can shift click and select these. Then, yes, we can. Okay, 
So we're going to cut to these and move them. So we use the uh, scroll on the side of the uh, mouse pad into the Doctor Who folder, season three. Right click and paste those into there. Okay, that's great. Yeah, there they are. And let's go back now um, to movies. We'll scroll back up. And it was uh, 2441, I believe, that we were in. Yeah, those are the old files that I'm not going to use. I'm not interested in keeping the, uh, the special features. Should I want to watch those, I can always go back to the DVDs. So let's um, let's see if we can do one of the keyboard shortcuts I know from Windows to get rid of this. Shift and delete. Yep, there we are. Are you sure you want to permanently delete? BBC DVD 2441. And yes, I do. So I'm going to delete that. Okay. Incredibly easy. Uh, the only thing I was surprised about was the uh, the, the lack of um, the selection window. I don't know why that's not there. Um, but that uh, was a very, very easy process. Um, the... Um, the files were easy to find across the network, uh, automatically found. I didn't have to enter any uh, any paths to the to the share. Uh, they were just automatically found. So uh, yeah, big big plus point there for um, Linux Mint. And um, I shall uh, end the episode there. Okay, um, if uh, you've liked the video, please leave a comment or rate um, or subscribe. That'll be great. I'll see you in the next episode.